that 100% match the risk appetite and the wealth appetite of the investor. This never happened before. And all this with minimum liquidity risk because the liquidity is pulled, not placed in the book. So this is the macro effect, the macro financial effect of the kind of financial paradigm we are talking about. Alrighty, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Cyprax video banger. In today's video, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. We're going to get through this really quickly because it's super sad to see members of the XRP community talking like this, losing sight of the long-term vision and actually understanding the digital asset in which they hold. As always, many blessings to you guys. Thank you all for returning. Buckle up your seatbelts. Let's jump in. We're going to be diving into the XRPL, showing you guys the real value of the digital asset XRP and the power that it has in the now to build wealth for you that, again, a lot of people are lacking an understanding of. So <clears throat> I'm going to take your attention here to this post, and we're going to get to we're going to get through some video clips. I'm going to play some panel discussions. I'm going to show you all that Ripple and the XRPL, along with its digital asset XRP, are going to play a massive role in this new financial system. I said to you all, XRP holders need to remember the price of XRP was meant to be stable for liquidity provision purposes. Here is a video of David Schwartz at Apex most recently telling you all this. There is a tremendous amount of volatility in digital assets, and just like logically there shouldn't be. Uh, because volatility is exploitable. Knowledge is power only when implemented properly. Again, I'm not making that up. That was David Schwartz, a XRPL engineer. I tried to tell people that XRP is an amazing asset for the DeFi space because retail and institutional players can provide liquidity to the XRPL without worrying about massive volatility price spikes. It's sideways movement over the past few years, even when other digital assets were extremely volatile. For example, a lot of people think that in 2021, the digital asset XRP did not hit new all-time highs like other digital assets did because of the Ripple lawsuit. That is actually incorrect. It is because XRP was designed not to be as volatile as other digital assets. Now, this volatility and this control of it has proven that it is a great asset for liquidity providers that want to benefit from the AMM features on the XRPL. So I just want to show you all examples of two different ladies. One of them is winning mentally and financially. The other is waiting around, hating her investments, saying it doesn't perform well without fully understanding what XRP actually is. One of the ladies is in the Cyprex Wealth 28 Club, earning daily yield on her XRP. And the other just allows her XRP to collect dust in her cold storage wallet. This is absolutely sad, people. Understand the digital asset that you hold. You bought the digital asset XRP, but you don't even understand what it does. Again, the vast majority of individuals are scared. They don't understand the AMM feature. They don't understand how to become a liquidity provider and the benefits of being one. This financial transformation is all about how you take action in the now. So again, I don't know this individual personally, and I'm not attacking her, but it just goes to show that there are so many people in the XRP community that are putting out this misinformation. You can see here, okay? I'm not going to you know, say this individual's name. You can read it on the screen, but she went on to say, and this person has thousands of followers. This post alone got 5.8 thousand impressions. This is, this is bad. This is misinformation. This is not good for the growth of the XRPL, the DeFi ecosystem, and the crypto ecosystem as a whole. We need to come together. We need to educate, which is what we're attempting to do here at Cyprex. She went on to say, XRP has to be the worst performing asset in history. Okay. This is embarrassing to say, because again, if you actually understood your digital asset, you could be putting it to work for you. So here in the Cyprex DeFi section, the DeFi University, the Wealth 28 Club, we are talking about how MAG is going on a crazy run, which is the number five digital asset on the XRPL. I said, crazy. MAG just went bananas and people are still waiting around for XRP to pop off. Meanwhile, they could have been using MAG to grow their bags of XRP this entire time. Here you can see a community member, Sophie. She went on to say, I made 2,000 XRP in just a few days. Thank you so much for all the info that you all provide. A real eye opener. So keep in mind, we have two ladies here, right? Both in the XRP community, both holding the digital asset XRP. One is not satisfied with their XRP investment, talking down on it, saying that it's the worst performing asset when the other one is up over 2,000 XRP. 
Do the math on how much money that is. Again, considering how much we actually charge for the information in the Wealth28 Club, you can see who is winning mentally and financially. Who would you rather be? The individual who's looking at their XRP investment and dissatisfied with it, or the individual that's constantly stacking more XRP and earning in the now. Keep in mind, at the bottom of this post, I said, this financial transformation is all about how you take action in the now. We have another individual. I showed you all this in a previous video breakdown. Look at this, 103,000 impressions. Do you see this, ladies and gentlemen? This is disgusting. XRP is so boring consolidating sideways for five plus years now. I've mentioned in a previous post why this is, right? I said here on the X space, it is important to note that sideways markets are optimal for liquidity provision, allowing for precise range setting. What am I talking about? I'll get into that in just one second. You can go read about this on the Ripple website. Understanding the proper utilization of XRP in the digital markets involves recognizing that extreme volatility complicates liquidity provision. Given that XRP's price action has been predominantly sideways over the past five years, it becomes evident that XRP is well suited for consistent liquidity provision, regardless of price fluctuations. This stability makes XRP a reliable digital asset for maintaining a solid trading range and assuming a degree of price stability, right? So again, most people don't even know that they can take their digital asset XRP and go provide liquidity. You can go read about this literally on the ripple.com website. This is straight from ripple.com. This came out May 29, 2024. This is a brand new spanking article, not even a month old yet as of time of recording this video. And look at what it says here. Orchestra Finance, which is one of the many DEXs on the XRPL, is leveraging the AMM feature to provide users with a seamless trading experience allowing access to a wide range of assets and an opportunity to earn returns for those who deposit into liquidity pools, hedge against price fluctuations and speculate on asset prices without intermediaries. Keep in mind, David Schwartz is the one telling you all that high volatility or volatile digital assets is not necessarily a good thing, right? And we've just went over how the digital asset XRP is relatively stable. Now, in my personal opinion, it will be stable at a much higher price in the future once more institutional money comes in. And obviously, of course, more liquidity comes in and TVL is locked on the XRPL. But right now, it being stable at its current price is a good thing because it shows the stability of the digital asset XRP. You can go over to Orchestra Finance, which again is one of the DEXs, personally a DEX that I don't utilize, but you can see the positions that you can open up and the APRs that you can get by being a liquidity provider for these digital assets. For example, XRP USDC, a financial institution can come in on Orchestra Finance and provide two-sided liquidity, XRP and USDC, and earn 2.45% APR on their liquidity position. They can deposit XRP in MAG into this pool and earn 49% APR on this position. This is actually really good for the digital asset XRP because it means that these financial institutions and retail traders or investors who are going to participate in the AMMs won't have to readjust their positions on a consistent basis because XRP, the digital asset, remains relatively stable. Okay, understand the digital asset that you hold. Stop talking down about it. Like, this is so disgusting from the XRP community. I cannot believe that people that hold the digital asset XRP are talking like this. <laughs> it just seriously shows a lack of education. They're not even listening to the engineers of the XRPL and individual representatives from Ripple telling you all this, that this is all possible. Remember I showed you guys a video breakdown of David Schwartz at XRP Las Vegas and Marcus Infinger at the most recent panel discussion where he was interviewed and told everybody that this is all possible? Um, next from XRP Ledger, what's on your roadmap? Yeah, so this uh, some amazing stuff happening. So first of all, uh, an automated market maker has been uh, released uh, very recently and uh, voted in by the community. That one's going live. Uh, which will obviously also be na a native feature on the protocol, which brings more security and user safety uh, and allows users to basically, you know, uh, put, put their liquidity to work. So like the more traditional market makers, because the automated market makers are implemented on decentralized blockchains, you can participate in an automated market maker, not just by trading with it, but also by a sort of the equivalent of lending an asset. So remember I said, the automated market maker has to have some USD so it can buy XRP whenever someone wants to sell it. And it has to have some XRP so it can sell XRP whenever someone else wants to buy it. And what an automated market maker does is it makes a return. It generates revenue from various different mechanisms, including spreads on its trades. And if you lend it, your asset, your XRP or your USD or both, then you own a sort of share of the automated market maker and you benefit from the trades that that automated market maker makes. Right. So keep that in mind. I'm not making this up. This just shows a lack of education amongst XRP holders, and it's honestly disgusting. Figure out how to build a separate bag outside of your long-term bags so that your XRP is not collecting dust and you're actually earning like some of the individuals in the Wealth28 Club.
right? I mean, bravo to this individual actually taking action. So moving on, all right? Now that that spiel's out of the way, we're going to get into the video clips. Hopefully you're still here. Smash the thumbs up button and subscribe. One of the realest individuals in the XRP community actually showing you all what you can do with your XRP. So many people are not talking about this. It's crazy that people are letting this opportunity pass by them to build wealth in the now. We're going to listen to a panel discussion of this individual right here, Demetrius. I'm not going to butcher his last name. Very systemically important individual, worked at major organizations. He was a member of the European Parliament, well, not a member of the European Parliament, but he worked at the European Parliament at as the Financial Technology Digital Transformation and Innovation Strategy Specialist. So you can see he has some pretty serious credentials there. Um, now, currently, he is a member of the Board of Directors of the Global Blockchain Business Council. Now, this is going to play a significant role in correlation with Ripple because we know Ripple is a GBBC member. You can see here, this is directly from March 13th, 2024. The Global Blockchain Business Council actually posted this. GBBC member Ripple has partnered with XLR Foundation to enhance the XRP ledger. This is going to play another important role because I'm trying to show you guys that the XRP ledger is going to play a massive role. So let's Take a second and listen to this gentleman right here, Demetrius, go on to say that only a few players will exist in the future, and we're going to integrate that with something that Brad Garlinghouse said on an interview this year as well. Take a second and listen. Uh, a retail customer, or if you are an institutional player wanting to get into this space, you feel much more comfortable to crowd your capital in and help the market grow by using these instruments. The question number two is where this new capital is going to be channeled. Is it going to be channeled to many players, to few players, and or to whom? Newcomers, old players. So it's still very early to 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 make a, a, an educated guess. But if I share my views, if I can share my views with you, I would suspect that network. Uh, effects apply in the crypto industry. This means two things. First, I do not expect a concentration, I do not expect the distribution of the buy of the demand for stable coins being very widespread. I see that in the end of the day, the market is going to be concentrated to only very few players, five, six stable coins. Of winners and losers. In the long run, I think the best technologies applied with the best use cases, delivering the best utility, that they'll win. Then next, what I want to get into is I want to play a couple of video clips from Demetrius and David Schwartz going on to talk about the importance of liquidity pools, how we're entering into an era of liquidity pools. Keep in mind, I just showed you all how the digital asset is sustainable and reliable for liquidity provision. Keep in mind, again, the vast amount of individuals in the XRP community don't even know that this is possible. They have no idea what's actually going on. Take a second and listen to this gentleman right here, along with David Schwartz, mention how liquidity is of the most utmost importance and how David Schwartz mentions that for the XRPL, liquidity is the secret sauce. The moment you have the possibility to create liquidity pools, you get into a completely different liquidity environment. With the existing dominant paradigm, we have only one concept of liquidity, bid, ask. Now, to calculate liquidity in this environment, we calculate effectively three things. The cost of liquidity, how big is the spread between bid and ask. The depth of the liquidity, how big is the list of uh, bid and ask to make market matching. And the speed of the liquidity, how much time it takes to match a transaction. Imagine how things change in an environment of liquidity pools. Imagine how things change in an environment of liquidity pools. Because if we're talking about tokenization of value, yeah. we are talking about the liquidity benefits you can generate out of the token, right? So liquidity is number one prerequisite here. You know, we had a DEX in 2012, we have cross-currency payments, we have issued assets. Um, we, we built the XRP ledger, we designed it, and other people have extended it with the payments use case in mind. And that payment use case is a cross-currency payment world. It's a world where some people like dollars, some people like euros, some people like Bitcoin, some people like XRP. It's a multi-token world. It's a tokenized world where maybe other types of assets are, token, are tokenized. It's because if we're talking about tokenization of value. And liquidity is sort of the secret, uh, the secret sauce to making that work. 
Yeah. We are talking about the liquidity benefits you can generate out of the token, right? So liquidity is number one prerequisite here. And liquidity is sort of the secret, uh, the secret sauce to making that work. Right? You cannot make this up. Now, again, to show you all that the XRPL in a multi-token system in the future is going to play a massive role. Do you all remember just the other day when I showed you all a panel discussion of a Bank of International Settlements panel, a gentleman went on to go went on to mention the high level Finternet architecture. And he mentioned how there is going to be at the center placed a high performance tokenized engine enabling a multi-token system. And I showed you all how when you go and you look at what the XRPL actually is, it is exactly that in a nutshell. Take a second and listen. Now, how does how do you build applications? The applications will be built by various providers, companies, banks, whoever it is. So that is where the innovation will come. So any innovator can build an application at that layer for any user and use this infrastructure. So this will lead to an explosion of innovation as different actors, market actors, regulated, unregulated players, all deliver applications for different users. So you're creating a market on top of an existing system by inserting a high performance tokenized based transaction engine in the middle of it. Now, why is what he said so freaking important? Ladies and gentlemen, just go read about what the XRPL is. You can see right here, pay attention, key words are extremely important. The XRPL is a high performance by inserting a high performance tokenized based transaction engine in the middle of it. Open source layer one blockchain built on the federated Benzentine agreement, consensus algorithm, enabling fast three to five seconds and secure peer to peer transfer of diverse assets. Keep in mind, diverse assets. What did Augustine Carson say? We foresee a system in which individuals and businesses could transfer any financial assets they like in any amount at any time using any device to anyone else anywhere in the world. Multiple ledgers could coexist. They would need to connect with each other and with, with other parts of the financial system, for example, through application programming interfaces. And their function and the range of assets they contain would likely evolve over time. They might start with a small number of assets and use cases before gradually expanding into something more ambitious. Like XRP, fiat currency, stablecoins, and NFTs, a multi-token system on a high-performance transaction-based tokenized engine. This is exactly what XRPL is. And you just heard the gentleman say what it is that they're attempting to integrate into this new financial system, right? You cannot make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot stress enough. Now is the time to be doing research. Last but not least, we're going to go back to Demetrius, where he goes on to talk about this paradigm shift and how we're entering into a realm where the old order book system is no longer needed. We're about to enter into this liquidity pool environment, this AMM environment, this liquidity provision environment, and it's about to be a massive paradigm shift. And again, you can go read about all of this on the Ripple website. How, again, the building blocks of institutional DeFi on the XRP ledger are coming into fruition. David Schwartz has been mentioning this. Brad Garlinghouse on stage has been mentioning this. And I just don't get why the XRP community is so distraught over the sideways price action of the digital asset XRP. It's, again, because over the past couple of years, we've been led to believe that the digital asset XRP is supposed to be at some significantly high price, which, again, I firmly believe in the future it will be. But right now, you have to understand that you can take advantage of the sideways price action of the digital asset XRP at these lower prices to build bigger XRP bags. And if you do not understand those principles, you will get left behind by individuals like us in the Wealth28 Club who are currently right now building bigger XRP bags by leveraging our digital assets to work for us. So that way now we are building wealth, i.e., not just letting our digital assets collect dust, earning more, so that way in the future bull run market cycle, we have way more XRP than people that don't participate in these AMMs, that just allow their digital assets to collect dust and sit there over time, thinking that it's the worst performing asset. Get out of that mindset, educate yourself. Hopefully this video breakdown showed you a little bit of those ins and outs. Again, I'm not making any of this up. This is coming from systemically important people. This is coming from XRPL engineers, from Ripple representatives. Please take initiative. Join a community of like-minded individuals like us here at the Wealth 28 Club. Tap into education. Many blessings to you guys. If you guys are interested in joining the club, visit cyberxtrading.com. We'd love to have you on the team. If not, just take advantage. Go read an article. Go watch a panel discussion. Go see what is actually happening behind the scenes with the DeFi ecosystem on the XRPL and what your digital asset is actually capable of. Many blessings to you guys. Be constant, be aware, and I will see you all in the next video breakdown.